Maria Gina Crespo was a medical technician in her native Puerto Rico, but following Hurricane Maria, Crespo said she was merely surviving there and decided to relocate to Western Massachusetts to live her life fully about a year ago. She said the new arrivals program at Holyoke Community College is helping her do that. I spoke with Crespo and program coordinator Laura Porter to learn more. Well, I think it was really a collaborative initiative um, working with the Mass Hire Regional Employment Board and Holyoke Community College as one of the education providers. Um, uh, the, so the career center system um, has really wanted to provide support because this area is a big center for relocation and because we have so many Puerto Ricans in this area already, it's obviously a point that many people would want to come to because they already have family or friends here. Um, so there was a, a very large influx of people who came after the hurricanes and um, it was really important to start trying to provide services to help them get jobs um, and also to give them English support services so they'd be more employable in the process. And so Maria, you settled here after the hurricane in the Chicopee area, right? Yes. And it's because you have family in Chicopee? Yes, my sister. Had you been here prior to the hurricane to visit? or Yes, just... two times. Mm -hmm. And so what made you decide to leave Puerto Rico this time around and, and settle more permanently here? Okay, um, after Huracan Maria, we don't have um, food, electricity, uh, water, and I have a a daughter with a medical condition, and that was the reason that I came here mm. for more help, more opportunities. And then once you settled here, how did you find out about the program at Holyoke Community College? Um, Mass Hire, uh, my advisor in Mass Hire, Marilyn Maldonado, told me about that. And why did you think, oh, this would, this would be a good fit, maybe I should participate? Yes, because I have to improve my English, I, I want to continue working um, like in Puerto Rico. Um, and that's why I'm interested in, in that program. Mm. And so, Laura, I understand the nuts and bolts participants, as Maria said, work on their English skills if they want to. Um, but also, kind of, there's some adjustments that you help them understand about life here and the region, services they might want to access, um, and then eventually linking to resume building and potentially jobs. Where did those nuts and bolts of the program come from? I think, again, uh, really thinking about what are the pieces that people need to be able to be employable. Um, so we work very closely with the two, um, the Mass Hire Holyoke particularly, and a little bit with Mass Hire Springfield, um, and really sort of identifying what is it that employers are looking for, and in some cases, what is it that students need to be prepared for training programs that might be their next steps to be um, moving toward careers that they're interested in. Um, so most students, um, you know, really urgently need employment of any sort just to sort of get stabilized. So we're helping them with resumes and cover letters and interviewing skills. Um, and also really helping them develop an understanding of the cultural differences between Puerto Rico and living here in this region. Um, so those are kind of some of the the most important pieces that, that were really emphasized in the English classes to support employment um, for the students. And so, Maria, I understand for you, when you were in Puerto Rico, you're a medical technician? It's like a med yes, medical technician, and I was working in uh, Puerto Rico Medical Science. Mm -hmm. uh, the company name was ASEN. It's, it's meaning in Spanish Administración de Servicios Médicos de Puerto Rico. And I was working in the clinical laboratory, um, blood bank, transfusion services, um, pathology department. And so are you able to pick up right where you left off here in the United States, or there's some more training that needs to yes, go on? I have, um, I need to, to get my certificate or a license because in Puerto Rico, you don't need a license for, for practice the, that, that work. And how long had you been in that line of work in Puerto Rico? 20 years. 
-hmm. So you've been in this line of work for quite some yes. time then. Yes. And I know when I've spoken with some <coughs> legislators here in this region, there had been kind of a, a push to help people from Puerto Rico look at possibility of, you know, not, not transferring your license necessarily, but some overlap so that people who are professionals like Maria of 20 years of experience might not have to go and start the process over. But are they going to have to do that in the short term? It depends on what their background is <clears throat> and what their previous education was. Um, so we actually have another training program particularly focused on nurses, and um, that's to help prepare people who have a degree and experience in nursing to take the certification test um, that is required here to be able to continue working as nurses. Um, so some something like um, Maria's background we don't have an exact transfer of those credentials, so she will need to continue with training to bring her up to speed and get her the certifications mm -hmm. that she needs to be able to continue in that medical direction. Um, but I think that's been a high priority for us is to try to help people transfer as much of their um, background, experience, and skills toward an applicable career here as you know, as much as possible. And I understand you're going to start a new the new training program in February at Holyoke, right? Yeah. What are you doing for work in the meantime? I'm working in a retail store. A lot uh, is Marshall Home Goods, and I work at part time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little while ago, Laura talked about some of the sort of cultural differences between here and Puerto Rico. Is there anything that stood out for you as new or different or surprising as you've you know taken up more permanent residence in Chicopee? Yes, because here well, the weather is different, <laughs> but... <laughs> a little colder, Yes, perhaps. a little yeah. colder. Um, in Puerto Rico, you see your neighbor. I don't know my neighbor here. <laughs> all, all, I think that the people is working working a lot and get to, get to the, their houses and live in their houses, but don't share with the neighbor. So less of a sense of community, yes. it sounds like. Yes. Is that something you miss? Yes. Yeah. Any, um, as, as the group worked together, it was about 30 different people, as I understand it. Was there a sense to, um, an effort to try and build community among that group, you think? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's always a really big priority because we want our students to feel like they come to class and they have a community where, you know, they've left behind friends and family, but they come and they start to build new relationships and get to know each other a lot because they spend so many hours in class together and, mm -hmm. you know, get to know each other and, and have a support system there. Yeah. For you, have you um, had a desire or the opportunity to go back to Puerto Rico and see what conditions are like uh, just past a year, after, more than a year after Hurricane yes. Maria? Maybe I go to Puerto Rico in vacation mm. to visit families and friends. <laughs> and But for now, you're here and you're looking forward to, I imagine, starting this, this new portion of your life. Yes, yes, because I, I feel... Sometimes I feel lonely, but mm. I, I am not lonely because I with with family here. I have brothers and sisters live in Massachusetts, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but I acclimate very well to the weather and to the culture. Yeah, mm -hmm. trying out those new things. Yes. And how about for other people who are in the program, Laura? Obviously, you know, Maria has a job. She's looking toward getting her professional credentials back in line. Everyone in the program able to make those same steps, or is it a, a range of different? It's a range. So we, HCC was able to provide two levels of English training. So uh, Maria's in the higher level group, the level three class, and then we also had um, a level two class. Um, of those students, I would say maybe... A quarter of them to a third have have employment. Either they got employment during that period of classes, or they already had employment. 
Um, and certainly everyone is continuing to get support to, to move forward toward employment goals. Um, we will be providing additional support over the next month or two just to kind of transition people out of that regular class structure toward um, you know, g kind of finalizing their their support from HCC as far as the English development, um, and connecting them to next steps, whether it's training programs or um, tying up loose ends that you know maybe they still need some some support um, with specific. Uh, areas or questions that they have, but they're also going to continue to work closely with their counselors through mass hire system, either in Holyoke or Springfield. Um, and we've been in touch with them regularly, so there's a good collaboration there. And the national emergency grant funding provided for English classes, but it, it really is um, most tied to employment um, and the outcomes from that funding are, are really through the career centers to make sure that everyone gets jobs.